Uh, Thomas Park was hired by, at the University of Chicago in 1937 as an ecologist, and he's widely viewed as the founder of laboratory ecology. When I was young, Park trained me, and in fact, I was given Park's laboratory. I also inherited the data from his earlier experiments. Park began a systematic study of competition using flower beetles as the model system, and he found two species of flower beetles, and he pitted the two species against each other. During his first big competition experiment, he started to notice sometimes the adults in some of his replicate populations would experience die-offs, and he became concerned that there was a pathogen, an uncontrolled pathogen, loose in his experiments. He attempted different quarantine methods with mixed success, but he felt that fundamentally, the existence of an uncontrolled environmental component was going to contaminate any of the clean interpretations of his results. So he went to his chairman, effectively to uh, agree to resign and not go through the tenure process. But his chairman encouraged him to, why don't you see if you could make something good out of this, how to make a lemonade if nature has just handed you a lemon. The next couple of years, Park worked with a collaborator at the University of Illinois to identify the pathogen. And then when Park understood how to control it, he actually took advantage of the fact that some populations were infected and others he could make certain were not infected. And then he could examine competition in the presence or the absence of the pathogen. And what he discovered was in the presence of the pathogen, one species would win, and in the absence of the pathogen, a different species would win. Which made the experiment all the more interesting. At the end of his career, he hoped that sooner or later I would have enough freedom that I could analyze the data using computers. Given that the results are still discussed in current textbooks, and given that the message of his papers is still relevant today to the way ecology is done, I think it's a valuable thing to do. So Mike came to us with, um, in his trunk, a couple of Rubbermaid tubs um, full of binders that had come from Parks Lab. We had to figure out how we were going to take these from being, you know, paper copies to being a digital form that people could um, download, reanalyze, um, to look at in all of their detail. And it was immediately obvious that, you know, taking them to Kinko's was not going to be sufficient. So we contacted Duke Libraries um, to see if they might be able to help us. They had just bought the Fujitsu high-speed scanner. So we sent them several binders and they ran that through their fancy scanner. We've done step one. We have them in a digital format now, um, but that still doesn't give us you know, the raw numbers. So how are we going to transcribe all of these numbers from an image into you know, a spreadsheet that we could actually work with? It was going to take a lot of time to just go through, you know, page after page after page. We could have hired a hundred interns to sit down and do the transcription, but that just wasn't going to be a possibility. So then we start looking into Amazon Mechanical Turk, which is a marketplace where you post human intelligence tasks um, or hits. People you know, scan through the list of available hits and pick the ones that they want to work on. Um, and then there's a micropayment scheme where you get paid for each hit that you complete. We put up all of these tasks on Mechanical Turk, um, linked to images, linked to spreadsheets. Uh, and then we downloaded all of those spreadsheets and now we have sort of this nice collection of the original image as well as the um, sort of digital data that goes with the table in each image. So Dryad has a component called Dryad Labs, which is a set of exercises that um, teachers can use in the classroom that take a data set that's in Dryad and then do um, some sort of exploration or analysis with that data. In the data that's being archived in Dryad, it will be possible to examine the individual population histories. And I believe, relative to what you see in the textbooks, undergraduates will be startled to see how messy that equilibrium is. 
the students not just see this table in their textbook, but actually be able to get their hands on the data um, and ask sort of other questions, see if they can get the same results that Park did. Um, there's just there's so much more that you can do when you actually have have the data itself and not just the, the end result. <laughs>